Hello everyone, um, I'm Maddie. Welcome to my video on how to create a master program. So a lot of you have been requesting this since I showed it off in my robot review video. So I thought I'd go over how to make a master program first on like a simple level so you understand it, and then do a master program on a comp more complex level, which is the one that I use. I did not create this program. I found it online somewhere. I don't remember where I found it, um, but I'm not taking credit for creating this program. So first we're going to make a simple master program. So to do this, we first need to turn all of our individual robot runs into my blocks. So how we do this is we'll go into, this is just the run three, I've already done this for other blocks. So you see you can find your my blocks on the my block tab. So these are the other two runs that I already turned into my blocks. So we're going to highlight everything in the program, excluding the start button. You don't want to include the start button. You go to tools, my block builder, and it'll take you into this menu. So from here you can just turn, choose any icon that fits. It doesn't really matter what icon you do, and then you're going to give it a name. So we'll call this run three. Um, you can't have it the same name as a program that already exists, so that's why I had to add the underscore in there. And then we can finish. We don't need to worry about parameters. Um, hopefully I'll show a video where I teach you how to use parameters uh, later. Uh, and then so you see it comes in here and it's just a my block in there. So now we can go into a simple master program. And what we're going to do for this is this is just going to say, wait for it to press the button, run the program. Wait for someone to press the button, run the program back and forth like that. So what we'll do is we'll just add a wait block say brick buttons compare brick button we'll say center to be pressed and released so it doesn't start immediately it has gives you a bit of time to take your finger off and then we'll go into my blocks and we'll drop our run one in there and now we can just tr copy and paste this and do the same thing for run two and then the same thing for run three and so that's a very simple uh, master program so you can do this and all it's gonna do is you're gonna press this button it'll do that entire run and when it comes back you don't press any buttons you switch out your attachments and then once you're ready and set you press the center button again and it'll go and so this will just automatically go through your programs and it's very simple uh, you can teach this to a very beginner team but now I'm gonna go and show you the more complex master program so now I'm going to go through and show you how to create the master program that I use. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring in a variable block. So we're going to bring this out and we're going to use a variable count. So I already have it set here, but what you'll do is you'll say add variable and then write in count. This is going to be a write numeric and this is going to be initially one. So this, what this does is this stores information within the block. So I can later call out the variable count and it will read what that variable count is. And we're going to change the variable count within the program. And this is what determines what mission we're going to run. So if it's count is one and you press the center button, it's going to play run one. So after the variable block, we'll put in a loop followed by a switch. We'll put a data another variable block right within here and this is going to say read numeric and then under here we're just going to change our switch block to be a numeric switch block so we're going to drag this out and now we want as many slots as we have programs so in this case we have three programs and then this is going to be two and this is going to be three so meaning when this variable block is reading that appropriate number it will play that block so within here this is going to be what's displaying on the screen of your brick. So we're going to bring in these display blocks. I'm going to say display text. And this, you're just going to write whatever you want. So we'll just say run one. And you can adjust where it's displayed and how big it is uh, once you figure out what you like. Right now, I'm just going to leave it as the default for time's sake. And then text run three. So now that we have that all set up, now we're going to get into the part where it actually is going to play the program. So now this is going to be a switch block. So we're going to drop in a switch block and this is going to read brick buttons and it's going to compare brick buttons. 
So now this one is going to say when the center button is pressed and released, it's going to do this. If it's not pressed and released, it'll do this. Uh, for me, I like doing the tab view because we only deal with the first case. This case, for the not case, we're just going to leave it blank because we don't want it to do anything if it's not being pressed. So for the case when it is being pressed, we are going to put in a variable block and we're going to read that variable count. And then we're going to put in a switch block. And now this is where we're going to put all our my blocks. So over here, we're going to create numeric just like we did before drag this over here add one so that we have three for the amount of programs that we have and now within each one of these spots we're going to drag in our my blocks so we'll say run one run two and run three we'll go down there we'll zoom out a bit so that we can fit everything better and now after this this is where once it finishes doing this run, so it will complete this run, return back to base, hopefully, or maybe you're going to do a touch penalty. And after that's done, it's going to automatically switch to the next, next program. So you don't have to scroll the next one. If everything goes perfect in your run, all you have to do is just press the center button. So how we do this is we're going to take our count block again, and we're going to read this. And then this will go into a logic or a compare block. And we're going to say if it is not equal to. So we'll have that wire going into here. And if this count variable is not equal to the maximum number of missions, in this case that's three, then we'll go into a logic switch. So we'll put this switch block in here. So we'll just switch this to logic and that will get dragged to there. I'm going to switch this to tab view. And in the true case, the false case is going to stay the same. It's just going to stay empty. The true case, we're going to add a read count. And then we're going to add a math block. And then we're going to add another count variable. So it'll say read count. This will get put in here. It's going to add one to that count and then we're going to rewrite the count variable to whatever that is. So basically this entire section is saying read the count. If that count is not equal to three, which is the maximum number of missions, so if it's equal to one or two, then we'll continue into this logic block. So if that is true and it is not equal to three, then you're going to read the count and you're going to add one to what it currently is, and then that's going to be the new count variable. So that resets it, and so let's say that if this, this were to be one, one is less than three, so we'll read one and we'll add one to that. So that's equal to two. So the new count variable is now two. So on the basic level, this is all you need for a master program, but this doesn't allow you to scroll between missions. So now we're gonna add the part that is going to allow you to scroll between missions within your master program. So after this switch, so before the end of the loop, after this switch, we're gonna add the part that is going to allow you to switch to the left in the, within the programs. So we're going to add a switch block and we're going to do another brick button compare brick button. This one is going to be if it's pushed to the left and this is going to be a press and release. Switch this to tabbed and this is going to be very similar to this process right here. So we're going to read our variable if our variable count is, we're going to grab a compare block. If this variable count right here is greater than one, because one is the smallest mission that you can have, then we'll go into a logic switch. So switch this to be a logic block tabbed view and we're going to drag that to connect them over so if it's less than one and the if the button is pushed to the left and it's greater the value is greater than one which means that it's not one then we're going to say read this data block 
we're going to want to read numeric. We're going to do a math block over here. And then we're going to do another variable block. So now this is going to say read that value. And if that value is greater than one, then subtract one from it. And then we'll rewrite that count variable. So let's say that this would be mission two. We're going to press the left button. So two is greater than one. So we'll go into here. It's going to read two, subtract one from it. And so that's going to be one. And that's going to be our new count variable. So now we're going to do a very similar process for if our right button is pressed. So we'll go into a switch to read brick button, compare brick button. This is if the right one is pressed, uncheck the left one. And then if it's going to be bumped. And now on this one, this is going to be pretty much identical to the one that we did right after the my blocks played. So this is going to say read variable. And then we're going to do a compare. So we're going to read our count variable. We're going to drag this into here. If this is not equal to our max number of missions, which is three, then we'll go into a logic switch. So this is logic. Switch the tab just for simplification of looks. And then within this, we're going to read our count variable. And then we're going to add one to that. So we'll take our count variable, add one, drop this in here, and now we're going to rewrite our count variable. So that's just going to say if the right button is pressed, then we'll add one to it. So very similar. It's actually the exact same to the one that we did after the my, after the my box played. And that's it. So that's uh, your master program that you've created now. So now you can scroll through your missions, figure out which ones that you want to run during a competition, and you're going to have just the missions that you need, nothing else. Uh, it does kind of complicate your uh, raw file because it's going to add the my blocks in. You can delete the old files so because they're everything is within the my block. So if you want to edit a my block, you want to edit within the my block and not within your old program. So you can double click on the my block and it will pop up your run. So now then you, you can edit within the my block and it automatically saves. That's one thing important to remember because if you're editing your old program, it's not going to affect the my block. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I'm going to try to get some more videos showing my or my other programs out to you guys soon. Maybe my school schedule is really busy, so it's hard to get these out. Um, so thank you for watching.